I took six days to create Earth, and the rest of the universe took two days. This, if nothing else, proves that this book is not from the creator of the universe. That's just one example. Let's take example two. It's example two here. I have Surah al Rad, Thunder, Ayah number two, page 249. Allah Allah al God who um, he lifted the sky without columns that you can see. <laughs> I'm not gonna even say why this is wrong. Lifted the sky without columns you can see. First of all, this, you know what? I'm gonna stop. Let's just let's go. I have many examples. I, I only have five minutes, so tell me when I have one minute left. <laughs> Surah Al-Kahf. Surah Al-Kahf is actually a surah that a lot of people read. They like, they like this surah, the cave. Uh, and there's importance to that because people just love it. I don't know why. 303, page 303, ayah number 86. It's talking about this, this fictional character, Dhul Qarnayn. Uh, and he's saying like, he's like basically conquered the world and when he reached the end of the earth, he found the sun setting in a well of hot mud. No comment, no comment. Uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, page 48, 48, 48, 48. Uh, if you don't find two male witnesses, get a man and two women. I've heard arguments on why the inheritance of a woman is kind of like, you know, you can make logic of why it, it, it's, it's, it's have the inheritance of a man, but there's no logic that explains why the testimony of a woman should be worth half a testimony of a man in court. There's no reason for that. Uh, hell, women have better memory. If anything, you know, I, I just, you know, anyway. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there, I'm gonna leave it there. I have so many things, I, I mean, I'm, yeah. This is two ayahs together. This is, I, I like to use this example because I think it's like a mathematical example. There are so many mistakes. There are mistakes that are, that are logical, that are scientific, that are numerical, that are grammatical, grammatical mistakes in a book that's supposed to be a, a miracle of language. This here is uh, from Surat uh, Al-Baqarah, ayah number 36, that's page 37, page 37, okay. And the mothers should breastfeed their children for two years, full years. Okay, that's 24 months. Okay, remember that because I'm going to go to the other one here. 24 months for breastfeeding, right? Hamluhu wa fisaluhu thalathuna shahran. It's talking about hamluhu, the pregnancy, and fisaluhu, that's like breastfeeding, is 30 months. So breastfeeding and Pregnancy is 30 months, and you're on the other side it says like pregnancy, like uh, that breastfeeding is two years. That makes pregnancy six months. That's wrong, in case you guys don't know that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop here. I have many, many, many examples, but I have five minutes. And uh, there are people I, I gave most of my time to Reyaset because he has something more important than me to say. Uh, I'm gonna read you some stuff that I wrote here. I have one minute. The Quran is the only pillar Muhammad ibn Abdullah claims to proffer, claim to prophethood, prophethood stands on. So why Muslimish? Large social reform in the Middle East is not possible unless the discussion about the heavenly origins of the Quran happens freely, which is impossible because of the, law, because of the laws prohibiting such discussion and punishing those who leave the faith of Islam by execution. In the United States of America, we have the freedom to have this discussion and we need to take advantage of this unique privilege and start a discussion about all the verses of Quran that contradict science, logic, and 21st century ethics. Freedom from the rigid framework of the life of Muhammad ibn Abdullah, 
who is viewed by over a billion Muslims as the most honorable man to ever walk on planet Earth, might not change women's condition in the Middle East immediately. But at least primitive acts like kidnapping and enslaving women during war, or a marriage of a nine-year-old girl to a 50-year-old man, could be condemned freely by the society without the fear of burning in eternal hell for allowing the thought of falsehood of Islam to cross their minds, or the more real earthly fear of being accused of questioning Islam. Islam, like all primitive Middle Eastern religion, restricts freedom of thought. It even describes some thought as evil and prohibits humans from contemplating thoughts critical of Islam. Muhammad is a religious and political exception in his influence that still affects the social progress of humans in the 21st century. No religious or political figure in human history has ever reached that level of influence Muhammad ibn Abdullah has had and still continues to have on as many people for as long of a time. I'm not going to say that part. <laughs> Slavery is allowed in Islam and the extreme militants of Daesh slash Ikhwan Inc. are working within the limits of what Islamic sources have reported as actions of Muhammad during his life, particularly after his immigration to Medina. Muhammad's Quran has the qualities of a book written by a freedom fighter in Mecca, but a political leader in Medina. Muhammad threatened his wives with divorce after one of his wives, Aisha, found him in her bed with his slave Maria. Muhammad used the Quran as a message from the creator of the universe to threaten his wives for him. For over, for over a billion humans to regard a book contradictory to scientific information, a book that allows slavery, states that women's testimony in court is worth half a man's testimony, and includes plenty of violent verses that for many who read the book without understanding the context in which Muhammad used these verses in, will understand the verses to mean exactly what they say. Kill them whenever they find, whatever you find them. Discussion about the truth of Islam cannot be had in mosques. Muslimish is a space where people who still identify with Islam in one way or another can freely discuss the issues they have with Islam teachings that don't make sense to them, family pressures, scientific facts that cannot be ignored, understanding that life on earth started and evolved will liberate humans from their slavery to an unseen God who in his final message to humans elevated obedience above all other values and discouraged followers from asking the question that might make them worse if they knew the answers. We were not banished to planet Earth. We came from planet Earth. And we are alive. So let's make it count. Thank you for coming to the Muslim Strength 16 Conference. Thank you. Thank you.